Join me as I explore the exciting world of model railways with behind the scenes features, step-by-step -step tutorials, interviews, videos, reviews, and much, much more. I'm Dawn Quest and I love building model railways. Model rail enthusiasts are flocking to Abrail 2024, held in the small market town of Abingdon, just a few miles north of Birmingham. Search through Wikipedia reveals famous people born here include Anne Sfradia, widow of Anskill, Lord of Seacourt and mistress to King Henry I, and of course Bishop Henry de Landy, born here in 1654. The tourist office wanted us to point out that back in 1986, Dave Ballinger, drummer with the Baron Knights, bought his band here, the Baron Knights, for a sellout show at the Abbey Centre. We Most people, of course, know Abingdon for the 2003 mini riot, as reported in the Daily Mail, when all three local branches of Waitrose in the town centre ran out of ethically sourced sourdough bread and replaced their sock with cheaper Mother's Pride loaves from the nearby working class area of Didcot. Main attractions include the Abbey Meadow Outdoor Swimming Pool, training ground for the Olympic breaststroke gold medalist Eric Bristow. Oh great, looks like I got away with that without any interruptions from Doug. When you're expecting big crowds, you need a big space. And for their 50th anniversary, Abrail 2024 don't just have one big space, they have four. Like here, 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 and here. In fact, there are layouts all over the college. Lost Animals is right next door, here next to a ward. And speaking of Lost Animals, where better to start than with this wonderful layout by Bob Norris. Lost Animals depicts a location in the Texas, Arizona area with trains from the 1940s to 1980s. The layout is packed with details, including a cement works, pickle works, scrap yards, factories, bus depot, car importers, horse riding school, radio station, depot, and an interurban line. Bob belongs to the Gosport Model Railway Club and Lost Animals was one of a handful of amazing engage layouts at Abrail 2024. Inksy Yard is a 2mm scale engaged layout by Dave Searle from the Epsom and Ewell Model Railway Club. Hinksy Yard is situated just south of Oxford. It's a DB Schenker, formerly EWS, local distribution centre, often called a virtual quarry. Regular deliveries of ballast are stockpiled to allow trains to be prepared for weekend engineering works. Rail, sleeper and ballast wagons are all seen in the yard, 
as well as spoil wagons returning from engineering occupations. Passing passenger trains include first Great Western HSTs and network turbo multiple units and cross-country voyages. Passing freight services include Freightliner and EWS intermodal container services, car transporters from Cowley Works, scrap in containers, MOD traffic, coal and oil for Didcot Power Station and landfill from Bristol to Calvert within liner services. It was lovely to see Kings Park at Abrail 24. Kings Park is by Andy Stephanie. It's a 2mm scale N gauge based on a location northwest of London on the West Coast mainline. The area covers the four AC mainlines of British Rail and the Bakerloo Underground and Watford Overground of Queens Park Town. Further along are the sheds of Wilsdon Loco Depot. Now on its 63rd outing on the exhibition circuit, just seven more shows to go and I'm told Kings Park will be retired. So if you've yet to see Kings Park, I urge you to go and see it very soon while you still have a chance. It's a fantastic layout. One of the absolute highlights of the show was getting to see this, Moore's View, the second time I've seen it and my top layout of 2023. And I was delighted to catch up with its creator, Paul Holwell. I wanted atmosphere and I didn't like the idea of blue sky and fluffy clouds. I wanted a menacing sky where, you know, the crews have to work against the elements. So, and I love the idea as much as we run diesels, I love the idea that the heat and the fire in the boilers against the cold of the snow, but they had to battle to keep the tracks and the trains running. Probably two vehicles away from finishing the layout, one tree away from finishing the layout, I stepped back and thought, oh, what have I done? There's no points, there's no sidings. Uh, but the idea was for was people to see trains running through um, at sort of rail speed or stopping at the stations. It was meant to look very bleak and, and cold. Uh, living in Devon, um, my late granddad was a driver for the Southern Railway at the time, based at Exmouth Junction. I'd done a few walks and along the, the now cycle paths, uh, a lot of the, the Granite Way, and there's a viaduct called Lakeview Viaduct. Now, Lakeview Viaduct, when we were on there, we were looking for a lake. And it's not. It's actually views the village of Lake. So when you turn around, there's the view of the moors. So I thought, moors view. So it was actually inspired by a viaduct, believe it or not. Yeah. Now, brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen, from the stark and desolate wilderness of moors view, to the technicolour dream that is Museum of Transport. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Museum of Transport for our gala weekend. All of our galleries are fully open for you to explore. Enjoy a free ride on our trams, trains and boats. This weekend we have a display of restored vintage fire engines from the collection of the Fire Engine Trust. Our Lancaster Bomber will be starting up at various times throughout the day. Please listen for announcements. At the bandstand, please welcome the Upper Sheep's Bottom Brass Band who will be playing a selection of popular melodies. For the high spot of your visit today, why not take a trip in our hot air balloon, situated adjacent to the bandstand? As you walk around the museum today, please take care of moving vehicles and always cross the tracks at the proper places. Thank you for visiting the Museum of Transport today. 
The Museum of Transport is by Robin Brogdon. It's a fictitious museum situated in the regenerated former Dockland of an English town. It's been going 32 years. This is our 287th show and we travel all up and down the country. We've been down as far as Folkestone and up as far as Aberdeen. A layout has to be entertaining and that not everybody that comes to a show is a model railway enthusiast. So there's things on here to entertain the mums and the kiddies and the grandmas and everybody that comes along as well. I essentially wanted to have some trams running. So it started as a tram layout and because the trams were from different areas, I wanted an excuse for them to be there. So a museum was ideal. But I really thought that after five years it would end up in a skip and I'd have built a new one. Thank goodness for us, it didn't. The Museum of Transport is an absolute delight. With such a big exhibition, perhaps it was not surprising to see such a variety of different gauges. I counted not one, not two, not even three, but eight HO gauge layouts, spanning the globe from Holland to Australia, China to Norway, France and Switzerland. The Burgella Barn is by John Leister. Had it been built, it would have been part of the extensive Hertische Bahn meter gauge network in eastern Switzerland and would have linked St. Moritz in the Swiss Engadine to Cervena in Italy. The route was surveyed in 1913 and several plans created, but unfortunately the line was never built and these days the only way to travel the route is by road. The layout attempts to represent a stretch of the line between the settlements of Maloya and Kasacha, which are about 20 kilometers from St. Moritz. As lockdown projects go, this layout is a thing of beauty. It's Zadyk by Phil Cotton. Phil tells me that he started this the very first week of lockdown. It was inspired by a trip to Utrecht for the Model Railway Show, and with some time on their hands, Phil and his colleagues decided to find a spot to watch the trains go by. And this is the result. In reality, there is no windmill, no farm and no station, but it was felt that just open countryside would look a little bit flat. Well, Phil, it's certainly not flat. I'd say it's definitely good enough. Don't it's Gouda. 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 No, it's Gouda. I'll just say Edam. Edam. It is made backwards. What is? Edam. I don't get it. Made backwards. Nah. Who asked you anyway? Well, I ain't been in it for a bit, so I want to say a few words. The trains you see passing by date from the 1990s to the present day and are typical of the Dutch railway scene. Moving chickens were something of a theme this year. I spotted them on several layouts, as was a mysterious outbreak of plastic ducks. I think we have the team over at Burdock to thank for those. Or should we now call them Burdock? I first saw this next layout at Worley last year. It looks even more impressive on second viewing. This is Bejao by Paul Stapleton. This layout is set in China in 2001, and by then, the remaining steam action was centred around heavily polluted industrial cities in the north. Beijing is set in the northern suburbs of such a city. At the back of the layout, we have an industrial railway linking coal mines off stage to the left, with the steelworks off stage to the right. Beijing is remarkable in that it really depicts China in that era, but also Paul has had a lot of fun with these lovely little cameos. Here's Paul's wife explaining to the cameraman that she's never seen these kinds of vegetables in her local Tesco. And this is Paul jumping out of the car to take a photo of the oncoming loco. But why don't we hear from Paul himself? This is my latest, probably my last, exhibition layout. It's based in China, 
where I visited uh, 15 times to photograph steam trains. I did my Great Western Branch uh, stuff about 50 years ago. And ever since then, I've tried to do layouts that nobody else has attempted because I don't want to have the 595th best Great Western Branch line on the circuit. I think I can claim to have the best Chinese layout on the circuit, but equally I've got the worst Chinese HO layout on the circuit because I've got the only Chinese layout on the circuit. If you only told me how stupid it was to build a 26 foot by 10 layout in a 14 by 8 shed, I was very grateful for 12 years ago. I never envisaged it would take such a long time. The general public, the mums and dads, the families, they want to see action. And what we try and do is, if you're a serious enthusiast, we will tell you serious stuff about China. If you're a mum and dad and the kids just on a day out, we will entertain you with movement. Abrail hosts, the Abingdon and District Model Railway Club, were represented at the show by four layouts. There was Abingdon, the Abingdon Branch, Sodor Island and Carlisle Canal. Now, at this point, I wish there was such a thing as smell vision as the Abingdon Branch came complete with its own set of aromas. There was diesel, there was coal, there was gas, there was even the smell of fresh cow. And believe me, it was pungent. It's the first time Abrail has been held over two days. And according to Club Chairman Bill, it's most likely not going to be the last. We had great pre-sales. We went online so people could book in advance uh, at a good discount. And we had uh, over a thousand uh, advance bookings. So that meant yesterday we had almost got a full house. The standard of the layout, particularly in the sports hall, was amazing and we're absolutely delighted uh, with that. We just like modelling and we like to have uh, other modellers around us. So the same as we go to shows, then they come to us. So it's, uh, it's good fun, but hard work as well. And of course, with every big event, you have to be prepared for the unexpected. Cade 5, rivet counter meltdown on 009 gauge layout, wrong number of rivets counted, en route. No show is complete without a handful of double O gauge. Unless you're the EM Society, of course. I was originally going to come to Abrail to film, but was asked at the last minute to step in and exhibit Brief Encounter. It was lovely to share Brief Encounter and to see so many people come and say hello, including some of my subscribers. Hi to Travis and to Graham and also to Keith. Remember the mints. I'd heard so many good things about Chris Mead's Overlord. Finally, it was my chance to see it for myself. Based loosely on Southampton and Portsmouth dockyards, 
The layout attempts to depict the hectic quayside activities to be found at many of the southern ports of England in the days surrounding the invasion of Normandy. This layout has so much on it, I think I needed a bigger camera. Chris does an incredible job of capturing the confusion of the moment. Tanks are awaiting loading, mechanised infantry columns search for their embarkation point. There are specialist vehicles such as bridge layers, rocket launchers, mine clearers and amphibious tanks. Landing ships of various shapes and sizes, together with the vital support of escorting destroyers and torpedo boats prepare to put to sea. Chris told me that he created this marvellous effect with the water just with simple acrylic paint and yacht varnish. To water of a more peaceful variety and a different hue now, this is Redbridge Wharf by John Shaw of the Winchester Railway Modellers. Redbridge Wharf hasn't been out on the circuit since Tolworth as sadly the club has been experiencing some difficulties with its location of its clubhouse. It's really good to see that the Winchester Railway Modellers have pulled together to keep going despite their difficulties and it was fantastic to see Redbridge Wharf once again. The layout depicts an area of Redbridge in Hampshire the station was opened in 1847 by the Southampton and Dorchester Railway and became a junction in 1865 when the Spratt and Winkle line opened to Romsey and Andover. The large area of drained marshland between the wharf and the station was used as a holding area for materials. This then became the sleeper works including the manufacture of sleepers, bridge timbers and cast track components. In the final years of operation, the site was used to assemble long welded rail sections and lay out large point work complexes. Whiteacres is a double O gauge layout by the Stafford Railway Circle. It's set in the Staffordshire Derbyshire area and represents a fictitious former LNWR route from Birmingham to Derby and Nottingham. The line is on the high level and is linked to an ex-GCR line on the lower level. One throat of the station is modelled together with the station buildings and surrounding town scene. Whiteacres is a lovely layout. It's probably one of my favourite of the show this weekend. There was also a handful of more specialist gauges. There was S4, P4, EM, even a TT3 gauge.
and one layout in particular was the source of much amusement and fascination, and it was this one, Oat Loose, a Z gauge layout by Paul Spray. Oat Loose depicts scenes observed from a holiday chalet in the Alps. There are haymakers with scythes, children skipping, a man with a parrot on his shoulder, and a walrus, which has somehow found its way so far upstream. We also spotted some hungry cows, a wild boar, and a falling tree. York is a two millimeter fine scale layout by Peter Kermond. It depicts York Station as it was in the late 1930s and features a view of the inside of the magnificent overall roof, as though you were standing on the platform. York is the crossroads of many rail routes of the north, so a huge variety of stock and liveries passed through at the time. I love something a bit different, and the Parlour Railway by Peter Boyce is certainly that. Peter writes, if an Edwardian gentleman had wished to run a model railway in his parlour, this is what he may have had. It's constructed of mahogany panels, curtained with velvet, and lit with brass and green glass shaded lamps. And finally, James Street. I've been wanting to see this for quite some time and it certainly didn't disappoint. It also won best in show and not hard to see why. James Street is an N-gauge exhibition layout on a grand scale and is supposedly located somewhere in the Midlands, mainly served by Midland and Eastern trains, but with Western and Southern region specials at times. I'll just leave you to enjoy this layout for a moment. It was certainly an ambitious goal to turn Abrail into a two-day event this year, but Abingdon and District Model Railway Club can hold their heads up high. They put on an amazing show and should be rightfully proud, with some of the best layouts I've seen all under one roof. Well, after an incredibly busy two days at Abrail 2024, we've seen locos, we've seen cars, taxis, the odd bicycle or two, some horses, some cows, even a wild boar. And of course, let's not forget the ducks and the chickens. That's it for me. See you next time. Bye-bye. But hopefully, this could be the start of something big. If you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my future videos.